So for this particular video, what we'll be doing is to scrape all these 1000 movies, movies that have the top lifetime grosses. So we have about 1000 movies. I see that here, one of 200. This tells us that there are 200 movies on each page. So let me scroll down. So we said the number here is 200. Mission Impossible is number 200. Then we also see that there's an option to navigate to the next page. The code we are, we are going to write should be able to navigate to all these pages down to the last one, right? Until it gets all the movies that are on this website. We would also want to get more information. For example, we want to get the rank of each movie. We want to get the movie title. So for the title here, for example, we see the movie name and then there's a link. We would also want to get that link because for each movie, we want to go to the next page to get more information. We may not be able to do that in this video, so we'll take it in bits such that when we when we are going to the next video, we already have an idea and a direction on what we need to do. Then we get the worldwide lifetime gross, domestic um, lifetime gross, the percentage, the foreign lifetime gross. We can ignore the percentages because we can also calculate that on our own in here, right? If it's needed, then just the year. So to do this, we need to install Python on our system. And then we need to install this. I'm using this selector gadget because it's easy to use. So I can come here and let me scroll down a bit. I can come here and just hover over some pages. And then I start getting information about the that particular column or table. But I'm not interested in everything here. This is just telling me this is a table. So I want the entire table. But then uh, let's see. But then what if I want, let's see. I, don't, I just don't want the whole table. I want, let's do TR. TR, you see TR just selects the entire row for me. It's still the same thing. And then we see that TR has 204 rows where we were expecting 200 rows. So we'll just look at it and see where we are getting the data that we don't need and we can clean it up. So this is the whole idea. So um, if you want to follow this video, you need to have this CSS selector installed. So what you can do is just go to your browser and do um, selector gadgets gadgets chrome so it's a chrome extension so it's going to come up at what uh, as the top um suggestions here you just click on it so i already have it installed so i don't need to install it anymore so what you can just do here is to install it on your browser and you can start using it and up next we need to just create a virtual environment a python virtual environment where we will install all the libraries that we need to work with for this project. For this project, we'll be using Scrapy. Scrapy, yeah. So um, Scrapy is a free and open source framework for web scraping. So we see some simple steps here. The steps that we should install Scrapy, we can import it, do all we need to do we can deploy it so what we are doing is we're going to be is we're going to be building a spider that will um, crawl a website for us so you can check for, for some um script pie examples online if you are interested let's say web scraping with script pie so you find some examples here so you can look it up and see some of the things they've done. You can copy some of the ideas to implement it in your own project. So uh, here is what is Scrapy. Scrapy is a free and open source web crawling framework written in Python. It is a fast and high level framework uh, used to crawl website, extract structured data. So we're not really interested in the whole long story. So the, whole, the steps is simple you install this if you don't have it already so this helps you to create a virtual environment you create your virtual environment and you install or everything you need to install install scrapey um, if you're using anaconda 
you use Anaconda to install script. I'm not using Anaconda. Then you will see some basic steps here. And um, we're going to try some of these things out and see what it looks like. You can test it out, see if it's working the way you want it to work or not. So let's get started. So I'll be using Visual Studio. I have Visual Studio installed, so it's a lot easier for me. I have navigated to a folder called Web Scripting on my system. So um, if you have another ID you want to use, you can also use it there. So for me, for example, if we go back to the example we saw here, we see that the script um, IMDB, but that's not the site we're scraping. We're scraping um, the box office module. Then the type of information they also scraped is also, it's almost similar to the information we we'll also be scraping, where they get information about movies, the rating of the movie, the title, the directors. And they use a lot of expert here, so I won't be using expert, but I'm opening this just to show you as an idea and um, and how we'll also be testing this out. Let's go back here. So for the setup, you are told to create a virtual environment. So since I'm using this, it's very simple. I'll just go to command palette. So I have Python installed. If you don't have Python installed, you will need to install Python before you can actually do this. So I'm creating the Python virtual environment. So there's the option for Conda. I don't use it that much, so I'll just use this. Then um, selecting Python 3.10. And you see right here that the virtual environment is being created. So the virtual environment has been created. I want to see this, I can just go to terminal, new terminal. Then I can just switch to, so we see that here. So we see that virtual environment has been activated. We can now in start installing all the libraries we need to install there. Let's go back to this. Instead of running all these steps, that's what I just did with um, sort of doing PowerShell or all this. That one is taken care of. So for Windows, we need to do this. VS Code has taken care of that for us. We don't need to do that anymore. Um, activate uh, is taken care of. So then the next step is just to install Scrapy, just as we saw it on the website. The same thing, pipe install Scrapy. So we'll go back here and install. So um, Scrapy has been installed successfully. So there's another library would like to use. The library is called Pydantic. So the idea behind Pydantic is for data validation, right? So you said um, data validation and settings management using Python type annotation. So we want to validate the data that we are getting. Ideally, we can use Scrapy fields. Scrapy has fields, but um, I think Pydantic takes it to the next level by adding data validation for us. That, that, that means we don't have to start typing it out. Okay, do this, do this to validate the data. Pydantic take, takes care of that for us. So you can look it up and read more about it. So this is not um, an overview of Pydantic, but I'm bringing it up so you know, and we can take it one step at a time. So for this, for example, we just need to install Pydantic, which is also simple. So we just copy this, go back to VS Code and install Pydantic. Now we have Pydantic installed. So let's see what's the next step in one of the projects we are looking at. Uh, since Scrapy is a framework, you need to follow some standard framework to create a new project in Scrapy. Use the command start project. I have named my pro project Web Scrapy, so we will copy this. But ours is not going to be Web Scrapy. Let me place this here. We we'll name our own. Let's go back to the website. We want to scrape box office mojo and paste this here, click on enter. So we wait and see what happens. Okay, so we see new scraper project, boss office module using the template, blah, blah, blah. And you can start first with, so that means we need to navigate to this folder. We see that the folder has been created here. This command we ran just now has um, created a folder here. And 
we can navigate to that folder so let's do cd box now we are in that directory and that folder and up next we can run this so example so that means we're going to use an example of the website that we want to scrape so I'll copy this don't forget this is what the folder looks like box office mojo so you have settings you have pipelines you have middlewares you have items so as we approach this we'll be taking it one after the other and we learn more about it so what we need to do next is to run this scrapey gen spider example example.com so i think the same step was also implemented here so this is the whole architecture of what it looks like the way we saw it um down there then for items items is um project item definition where we define our movies we define cars we define everything we need to define then we have pipelines we have middlewares then we have settings and spiders so the goal is to just create a spider like we see right here so what we in our own case what we want to do is copy this url let me go to the home page the first page we want to work with so this is the first page remember when you're on this page make sure that it is um on worldwide and not domestic so copy this url then uh let me just paste it here I'll copy it you shouldn't do this don't forget to copy it so i want to run script by gen spider so that is generic spider gen spider uh, the name we use here, Box Office Mojo. Box Office. Box Office Mojo. Yep, that's it. Script by Gen Spider example. Our example is Box Office Mojo. Then this is the URL. You can now copy. Just take everything from here and run it enter i cannot create a spider with the same name as your project oh so let's give it a name oh let's give it let me edit this since we are focusing on the top grossing movies let's rename this to top grossing movies So create spider top grossing movies using template basic and module. So let's close this. Now we don't want to save any changes. So let's go to our spiders, for example. So we see that one of the spiders now is top grossing, top grossing movies. We see that we've imported Scrapey and um, we have top grossing movies spider. So we have Scrapey spider name is equal to top grossing movies allowed domains this is the allowed domains then for the start url we want to update the url because this url is not complete so let's go back here and copy this entire url come back here and update this so this is going to be our start url this is the url we want to use to get all the movies that we need to get so this is just the first step. Now that we have this ready, Scrapey is going to automatically send a request to this URL that we have right here. And when it does that, it's going to get a response from the website. From the response it has gotten from the website, we need to get some data, extract some data from the website. So let's go to items and define the things that we want to get from the website. So ideally, you see here that we have um, Scrapey, the Scrapey item, but I don't want to use Scrapey item because Scrapey item uses, um, it has fields and you need to start working on data validation later on. This is why we, we installed Pydantic. So what we want to do is to import from Pydantic import base model. So we import base model from Pydantic. So now, if we import base model from Pydantic, it means that we no longer need 
this so from there we want to take it one after the other so we want to name this class movie item movie item that means we're going to be treating each movie as an item and then we can now pass in the base model so that it inherits all the properties of the base model we can now clear this up so for the movie item if we go back to that page that we want to scrape realize that for each movie on this page we have a rank a title worldwide lifetime gross domestic lifetime gross domestic percentage foreign lifetime gross and foreign percentage and year so we need to define all these fields so let's get started so what we have to do now is start defining the field so we say um let's start with rank so for rank we will, our rank is going to be a string because the data coming from there directly is string then up next we want to specify the movie name the movie name is also a string up next we would want the let me see so we have worldwide word wide lifetime gross that's also a string then we have domestic lifetime gross domestic i can just copy this and change this to domestic domestic lifetime gross then let me see what we have here we have domestic domestic percentage that's also string foreign what is foreign foreign life time gross. this is also string so we have foreign percentage as well rank should be integer so that we have the year yeah. let's leave it as strings for now there's another information we need for example on this page so when we look at this page for example each of this movie should should have an id right so when you hover over this how do i show you that okay, let me see let me click on this let me click on avatar for example so you see that when i click on avatar you see this title right here so this is the id of this movie so we need to get the IDs for all the movies, right? So well, that information is on the previous page. When we hover over this, as much as we can get the title of the movie, we can also get the name in the URL that is showing down here at the bottom right Yeah. So when we start trying this out, you'll see, you'll see what it looks like. I'm bring this down now. So let's go back here. So we need a, a movie ID, ID is still string, then name, instead of name, let me change the title. So we have a uh, movie ID, movie rank, and most importantly, we need a URL for that, for that movie, right? Because we want to follow that URL to the next page. So say you are, this is still string. So we've been able to define some basic information about the movie we want to scrape using this so the good thing about using pydantic now is that if the data type doesn't match or if the field is empty there's going to be an error and you know that okay for this particular um field data is missing what did i do wrong what am i missing so let's go to the top grossing movies files here so what we can do now is to import so you see the file the the item we created is in items right so we can do from let's see now we're getting it from let's get from box office module dot items items import the item yeah see that works fine so what we need to do next is to start getting the data from the website so what we can do is to go to is to just run this command script pi shell we want to want Scrapy to get data from this website for us. So Scrapy is going to run in the background, go to the website, assess the data. The HTML response from the website now is in this variable called response. 
so we can always get the response from there so if i should just do response you're going to see um what it looks like it says it was able to get the data successfully so up next we now use remember we're using css selector so if we should go back to this page let me take this out and you need to click on the extension that you installed if for some reason you can't see the extension here you click here and you see other extensions that you have installed on your system you will find it there so let me clear this so i can now click here and click here and now we see that the entire table is selected but we're not interested in the entire table we want to get this data row by row we don't want to get the this means that we have to look through these items one after the other before we can get what we want to get that's not very effective notice this red line you see it's this red box is on each of the items but if i should change this to row saying i want to get this data row by row you see that now it is getting it row by row starting from the header down to the very last thing so let's use that idea here so if i do t t r saying that's table row i want um table row i now do get so what we can do is to for example say for this result because if you run table row only it's going to return the very long list how do you know this is a long list because i see the square bracket here so i can see okay this is a list i can choose the first item in the list for example so this is what the first item in the list looks like so this is the first row right so if i should say dot get it means now i can see what's here i see title i see foreign lifetime gross it means that this is a table header i see year and i see worldwide lifetime gross i see title and then i think there should be rank somewhere here this is rank so we don't need this we don't want this we don't want to work with this we can just skip this row so if i go here how do i skip the first Row, for example, I can say, okay, give me everything from one downwards. And this is what it's going to look like. That means we no longer have the first row, which is the header in our data, right? So what we can now do is to start taking this one after the other. Okay, if we, let me go back up. So instead of taking everything, we have an idea now on how to get all the rows that we want. Don't forget, that's the most important thing, the fact that we have an idea on how to get the first row. We can copy that, come back to pass. Now pass is telling us, okay, how do you want to get all the data you want to get from here? So I'll just say, okay, um, what I would like us to do now is to say rows. Our row is a list. So we just say it's equal to, you don't, you, don't, you don't have to specify this Python if you go it out to just to let you know. So this response that we're getting from here, we want to select all the rows and we want to skip the header like we did here just now that we don't need the header anymore. So if we come back here and say, okay, let's focus on just one row at a time. So we're focusing on row number one for example. So how do we get data from row number one, the row number one dot CSS. So row, row number one, for example, we want to get the movie title. So how do we assess the title of that movie, for example? So we say, let's go back to this page. So we see a lot of things here. Um, I'm going to clear this, we've achieved, achieved that um, objective. For movie title, for example, we see that we have Mojo type, um dot module field type title I'll copy this come back here and paste it you don't need to start stressing yourself to figure out what you need to copy if you click on that it's going to give you an idea you test it out and see if it works or not so by the time we run this we have um this result here that you can see properly and what we can do again is to say okay what about we add um get and see what the result looks like so when we get to this we see that we have this dot module fit 
title and after that again we still have this a link normal a link normal right which now because you see this tag starts from here and ends here that's before we now get the avatar so what we can do for example because if you go back to the previous step and try to say uh okay let's just edit this so that it works the way we want it to work so we, we need this right here to get what we want so we'll say dot a link or dot done with paste a link now if we should run get you see that now we've come very close to the value that we want to see so the value that we want to see right now is just this sitting right here avatar so it means that we can go back here and edit this and tell it to return the response as a text and now we have avatar this way we know that we are getting the movie title so we have to do this for all the different fields that we want to get right so we can copy this oh i just mistakenly exited the command prompt i'm going to come back here Control c so we can come back here and say okay now that we have the rows from that particular page what we can do is to do what is to look over the rows so we can say for row in rows right what would what do we want to do for example we want to get the movie title that as we just did movie title no title is equal to can paste what we just copied but this time around we're deleting this whole part because this whole record is contained inside the row so we say row dot css what we want to do we want to get the movie title so that's just one step so i'll need to rerun some of the previous steps so that we can quickly go back to what we were doing yeah so this i think this is the one that gave us okay let me just come here and paste this yeah so this is the one we ran last that gave us the movie title so we already have the movie title right here so what we need to do next is to get like the worldwide lifetime gross so to get the worldwide lifetime gross let's go back to that page remember i've not forgotten about the rank we'll come back to the rank so i'll just click on this and we see that when we do this we are getting the worldwide lifetime gross the domestic lifetime gross and this is either we go choose this one after treat it one after the other we so if we're getting this we get this alone i don't want to do it like that let's get everything at once then we can manipulate it and see how we can clean it up if we can get all the three together at once that would be great so we see mojo filter fit type money come back to the command prompt here and so what we want to do this time around is to come in here and edit this place so we have module fit type you know this should be money so if we click on get mm. so what do we have here we have mojo fit type money so we get we got only one result but when we selected this on the page we didn't get one result right we got multiple results so it's possible we are using the wrong method here so maybe we shouldn't be using get there's another method called fetch so let's see what it looks like. uh, is it fetch or extract extract so if we should use extract you see that now we have three results so we have the first one which is the worldwide lifetime gross we have the second one which is the let me see after worldwide which is a domestic lifetime gross seven eight yeah that's domestic lifetime gross and finally we have the last one which is what which is the foreign lifetime gross now we have all these three values at the same time so what, one way we can go about it is to clean this up 
get all these values together and we can now use that to get our money so let's do that carefully so um if i should return this it means i can for example select the first one only because the way i do anyhow i do it is going to apply to all of the trees so i can select the first one only which is going to give me this right so if i select the first one only and how do we get the value that we need that's a question how do we get the values that we need should i run this as text let me see yep so doing that makes my life easy so if i should take out a zero it means that i get all the three results now all the html tags are taken out and now we just have a list with one the worldwide the domestic and the foreign lifetime gross so what we can do later on is to worry about how we can clean up those these values to remove all the commas to remove everything else so what we can do is to just come back here since now we have the values that we want so we have um remember this is going to give us three results as a list so we can take advantage of that and do so what this one we want worldwide lifetime gosh there should be no space between worldwide, worldwide lifetime gross comma then the second one is going to be domestic lifetime gross domestic domestic how do you spread domestic yeah, that's a domestic lifetime gross and finally you're going to have the international or foreign lifetime gross let's call it foreign foreign lifetime gross so this is going to be equal to remember we know we know without doubt that the result from this right here is equal to a list so we are just going to copy this copy and paste this right here remember this should be row so up next what we need to get is the year so i'll click on year so when i click on year we have this we don't want it to select this as well so i'll do this and now we have module field type year dot a link so we just copy this go back i think that's why that's something i like about the css selector the fact that it makes life easy for you so we come back here and try to what do we want to do next let's see mm. so we want to scroll in here and paste what we have selected close and then click on get we're not getting multiple data. We're not extracting now since we're getting a single value. And now we see what it looks like. And then we see 2000. So it means that if we should um, extract this as text, we should get, and we can convert this to integer if you want. So what we're going to do, we see here, this is equal, here is equal to copy this and we come here we say row dot we paste what we've done here so this should give us the year and after that remember we are missing one thing we are uh, missing the rank of the movie and the id of the movie now when we did this initially remember here this is where you see like um information this link is just like a link that's a url for that movie that takes you to the next page but this url is not necessarily complete so let's go back to that page play this and what we need to do is to click on the movie title so when we click on the movie title remember that okay let me just show you so uh, let's clean this up paste what we've copied then let's see the result and now when you look at this carefully you see that we have the title which is great but then we have this a link as we saw earlier then we have the title and then we have the id this is where we have the id of the movie and this is where we also have the url for the movie the url we can follow to go to the next page 
to get more information about the movie that we are extracting. So what we can do here now is to look for means to extract this ID in this particular um, movie or to extract the URL. So what we can do here now is to focus on this a tag and see how we can extract this href. So to do that, just come here. Uh, so this is A, and we, we are trying to look at the attributes of A, right? Looking at the attributes of A, which should be href in this instance. So we just say, uh, what we are looking for is called, this is attribute spread correctly, this is A, T, T, R, it's missing R. So this should be href. Remember, we want to get this href. href. And I think that should be it. It should work fine for us. Let's test it and see. Mm, exactly. So it got us what we are looking for. So this can serve as the movie URL, for example. So let's even get this. Before getting the ID, let's use this to get the URL. URL is equal to, I should say, let me call this movie URL for now. I don't confuse it for something else later. Movie URL row dot. Okay, take this out. So this gets out the movie URL without trying too hard. And now what we can do is to just get the movie ID. So for the movie ID, we can if we have this result, it means that we can split it since the response is a text. You see, the response is a string, so it means that we can split it. We want to split it where we have these forward slashes. So come here and say split where there's a forward slash. And now we have uh, a list and we know that the ID is in the which position. We know the ID is in the position three, which the index here should be two. So what we have to do next is to Pass this right here and say, give me the values you have in index two. And this gives us the ID of the movie. So you can copy this right here, come back here and say movie, movie ID is equal to row. So from each row now, you know, so, we'll go, so that means the good thing about this is that as we are trading it through each row, we select all the information we need. So if we have 1000 rows, each time we go through that row, we are selecting everything at once. We do this and now we have the, what's it called? The ID of the movie. What we need to get next is the rank of the movie. So let's go here, go back to the page as usual, clear this and then we have movie rank. You can say, okay, we are skipping this first row. So that's not a problem. Copy this, come back and Let's clear these things up a bit. Dot get. And this is what the result looks like. So we have, um, yeah, I think if we say should return the result as text, this should work fine. Correct. This gives us our movie rank. That's super easy and straightforward. So we have rank, which is equal to this. Oh, there should be a row here. Yeah, this looks fine. What we can do after getting the movie, ideally what we would do is to yield, yield it. So remember we imported the movie item where we we're starting out. So uh, let me see, I want to yield movie item. So the movie item we want to yield, we know that it has a title. So title is equals title, then it has, nope, it should be a comma. Then up next, we know that it has a word, why lifetime gross, which is the same thing with what we have right here. We know it has a domestic lifetime gross, which is equal to, nope, which is equal to domestic lifetime gross, the variable defined. Up next, we know there's year. Okay, before that, domestic, there's foreign. Foreign lifetime growth and um, foreign lifetime growth as well. Then, um, 
we have year year is equal to year then what else let me see oh there should be a comma here um url is equal to movie url then id is equal to movie id hmm. what's missing double equal to then rank is equal to rank but that's not all in the feed we defined in what we defined earlier right we have an instance uh, i think there's a field for we say we have we see domestic percentage we see um foreign percentage so domestic seems like we have to go back and guess those values domestic percentage and um foreign percentage so let's get those values clear this domestic percentage so oh the two values came at the same time you can take advantage of that copy this and then right here you can clear all we have here and paste what we just copied domestic percentage then since we know that the result is more than one let's use extract so this is what the result looks like this is 73 this is 26 so it means that we can modify this a bit let's get the result as text yeah so we have our domestic percentage and foreign percentage so we can copy this come back to this step and say um domestic domestic percentage percentage comma foreign I want to unpack everything here foreign percentage so this is equal to what we just copied you know this is row so when we get our list we unpack the list into, the, into these two variables so we can scroll down and now we say this is equal to domestic percentage and this right here is equal to foreign percentage so by doing this alone now we're able to get all the movies on the first page remember this is just the first page so let's see how we can run this and output our results so they did the same thing here and then um they did spider crawl imdb so if we want to do that we need to quit uh, this so that we leave this interface and go back to where we can run this so we say scrape eye crawl what was the name we used that time i know it wasn't i uh let me see top grossing movies let me see top grossing movies i really hope that's spelled correctly so let's see what the output looks like so we see a lot of information for example look at this row for example you see uh okay we have the movie id we have the movie rank we have the title which is mission impossible we have the lifetime gross okay, this is working fine as expected how about we output the result to a file so that we can look at it better and then it tells us um let's see request finish it gives us some basic statistics about this uh let me see item script 200 so this was successfully totally script all the item on that particular first page so that's interesting it works the way we expect so we can actually output this instead of running this like this um scrapey crawl top roster movies we can output the results to a file so if we look at the example here there was an instance they output their own uh, see imdb data see json so this is what we just need to add but our own is not imdb so we are going to modify it a bit so we're going to change this to top crossing movies top crossing movies or we can call it both bus office mojo top crossing top crossing movies so the expectation is that all these responses that we're getting from the web is going to enter a json file so click enter and it's doing what it needs to do and here yeah, so let's check if that file has been created so we see a, we see a new file here called top grossing movies this works fine no issues um 
you can choose to format if you want to format this but i don't think we really need to do that right now so we see the movie id one two three it's interesting then lifetime gross for each movie we see the domestic so yeah, with this you have a simple spider that crawls the first page of that website it's interesting let's see the number of rows so that's correct up to 200 get get gets us the data that we need so if you follow down to this particular step that means um you've done a great job and this is really really interesting so let me close this up now that we know that this is working fine and it's giving us the data that we need i'm temp tempted to stop this video here right um but let's do one more thing so what we just need to do up next is to get the other pages right you remember i mentioned how um in the other pages there are 200 movies up to 1000 that is when we come back to this page we see we can follow this link until we get to the very last page where there are 1000 movies so what we want to do is to just make sure that when we click on this right uh we don't want all this no nope. so we just want this right here so the tag for that is a last a right then but that's not all it has um another attribute like a link if you see as i'm hovering over this at the bottom left here you see like a link that takes us to the next page but let's get started with this first so i can see joint spider top grossing uh not joint spider uh yeah scrapey shell this is the url and now we can run some of the commands we ran earlier so response so we just need to paste what we copied earlier on that page we don't need to get down to where we have this so let's do dot get dot get method so this is what the response looks like a href you see you see this link this is the link that takes us to next page to the next page you see that right so whenever we click on that button it checks for this link and follows it to the next page so the next page starts counting um counts up to 200 you get so it offset it by 200 so we don't want to do this manually by saying 200 300 we want it that if we click on it then it should be able to do that for us so we need to get this link that's what we need so when we come here remember earlier when we were working on this year when we we're getting the movie url we use this right here so we can try to copy it and see how we can implement it and see if it works well for it should work it should get the url for us so we can come here and say um the attributes we want to get href href so if we run this it should give us the url so with this now we have the url for the next page so we can copy this and come down here let me see i want to come outside the loop i believe with this i'm outside the loop. let's go up a bit yep with this i'm outside the loop so i can do whatever i want to do here now so we want to check if it has next page so we say if has next page is equal to response so now we're referring to the response so we say response.css remember what we did here response.css blah 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 Good. if it returns a result if it gives you a result if it is not none we want to go to the next page we want to get uh what's it called next page url next page url is going to be equal to so what we're going to do now we know that the str so we know that the response the response uh the response we got from the website has a url so it has a url join property url join right so the moment we did that is giving us some basic information here on what we should put here so what we just need here is the url so we can just take this out we know has next page is our next page url so when we get that url this url that we have here 
we are going to join it to this um, long domain allow domain so it's also going to follow that domain and it's going to go to the next page and give us what we need so we don't need to start specifying the domain i think that's one of the good things of using scraper you don't need to be repeating yourself a lot so when we go to the next page we want to return a re uh, want to return some result from that next page so we do uh, a yield you say yield the response we are getting from the next page we want to now send a request it's okay this we have our next page url uh, we want you to send a request to that url that we've given you so yeah we say url is equal to next page url now remember we've created our url here and now we say you should follow it and go to the next page url so now that we are sure what should you do with the next page should it just return the next page no we don't want it to just return the next page we want it to clean it up for us remember we've already defined all the steps necessary for cleaning up our data here and it is still this function right here right so we want to call this function this parse we want to call it again right we want to call the function again so we say okay self dot pass so what it's going to do is that it's going to get the first page extract the data from the first page and then it will check if there's a next page if, the ne if there's a next page it will just go to the next page and extract data for us from the next page then the if it has gotten the next page it will just use a function we've defined to generate all the results that we need to see so we can save this and our hope is that this should work so if this should work i'm going to stop this video and then um i'll upload the next video and how we, on how we can start going to each page the page for each movie to extract the data for that particular movie so this looks um simple it looks easy let's run it and see so i'm going to save this so um one more thing i'm going to de delete this json file I'm deleting the json file and um for us to run this now i'll go to let's see let me quit this and let's try running it let me see i'm go up yeah this is the command we use a scraper crawl blah 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 yeah make sure that my changes are saved and now i can just click on enter um no active project hmm that's weird we play terminal first delete the terminal just let me show i've not mixed anything up here yeah this is an active project oh i think i know what happened let me go to a new terminal mm. so um we are in web scripting right we need to navigate into the project folder uh, the project folder is box of cd box yeah so that should work fine now it's because we're not in the project folder so now i can do script i yeah this should work fine. okay so the expectation that if this should actually work fine we should have like up to 1000 movies that have been scraped let me see let me see items script so it is 248 it's either we've been blocked or something went wrong somewhere oh i sent an error message so an error, error message um yeah it's equal to 1999 okay url okay offset by 200 lifetime gross okay let's see what's happening let's read the error message what's the end validation now look at this look at this carefully now this was why i used um pydantic remember we used pydantic to say um this is what we want this is what we want and this is what we want now look at this carefully we see a situation where it says movie item for year 
that is carefully year it means that we are not getting the year it tells us that the year is blank so we, remember um when i started out i mentioned how you can use pydantic for your data validation now the fact that we've defined this field here means that and we've not specified that it's optional it means that it's compulsory for all fields to be populated so but when it ran this this particular field was empty right so and we know that this is happening for which of the pages let me see in pass movie item uh let's move up a bit so i believe this is happening for yeah this is happening for this page so let's just let's go to the second page and see what is happening there and why this is happening so i'm going to clear this oh clear and um close this then we go to the next page so what's happening in the year column on this page why are we not getting any results? I think this should be why we're not getting any results. For this particular year, there's no URL here. So I think um, the presence of URL in the other years would have influenced how we actually got that data. So let's see how we can actually fix this. So let's copy this page. Or instead of copying the page, Let's use the CSS uh, selector, click on this. Uh, okay. Mm. Let's copy the page. Copy the page. Then we're back here and let's see what we can do and how to fix it. So we know script I shell we paste. The URL we just copied. Oh, what's happening? Mm, let me see. Oh, okay, this command. Okay, no problem. Scrape I. Scrape I. Shell. So we are going to wrap this up on a part. Should work fine. Yeah, it's working fine. So our focus is on the year column. So we are going to go back to our spider and just look at the, what's it called? Yeah, this is what we use to get our year, right? We would want to confirm that it's working fine. We want to see why it's not working and see how we can improve it to give us the results that we need to get. So let's copy this right here. Come back here and um, Response, response dot CSS. Uh, we want to select all the rows first. Then we want to focus on row number one. Then in row number one, we, based on what we've done before, we know that this should give us the year. Right? And, um, in this instance, we are on the second page and we need to focus on this row. This is row number 34. Let's see. Counting from zero. I see from zero, that should be like 33. Counting from zero, that should be like 33. Oh, I think this is it, 49. So 49 is not returning any response. So this is where we have the problem. And the problem uh, the pro problem has to be with, um, what's it called? With this particular column that does not have a link. Is that is a column? It's a particular value that does not have a link. So we have to look for means or where we can accommodate where it does not have a link so let's go back here because what we have here ideally is to look for this and look for the one that has a link right so if it has a link we just get a text but now this particular value doesn't have a link so we can just go back one step and um take out this one right here and just click on get let's see what the result looks like yeah this is what the result looks like. You see, the result is a bit different. It doesn't have 
a link so we are this extra a normal the way you will find it in other cases let's test one and see so if we should change this to 48 for example you see that 48 has is a link so that's how we followed it easily and we got the result that we wanted but this one does not have a link right and now, now we have to date it let's say for 48 we just did um text it's not going to give us the result we want that was why we had to come to this before we assess this particular value but 49 but for 49 it's a bit different so we can modify what we already have so, so that it accommodates the two at the same time so this is what it's going to look like remember ideally this will get the one that has um link right one that has link so we can now put comma and give it a second condition so the second condition is still going to be the same thing like what we have here dot mojo mojo that type okay, mojo field field type is um year that's true but what we want to do is that we we want to say that it does not have does not have a what's it called uh, a link attribute that like there's no link attribute so if it checks this one first and this one fails we want you to check for where there is no link attribute so the way we do that now is to say um how do i, how do I type this we say not not uh has a so that means it should not have a link attribute so um i think this is this was one of the cases where i had to use chat gpt i was here actually ah, how do i do this so i just copied part of that explained to chat gpt and it recommended using this and then uh we want to get the result as text so let's see correct it works so if it checks for the first part and see if there's a link there there's no link it can't get any, any value it's going to return no so it just goes there and check for where it does not have um for where it does not have a link and give us the value that we need hmm. but is that really necessary let's see let's see is that really necessary hmm. now that i think about it I know I use chat DP to solve this, but I'm saying something else. What if I just say text? So it gives me the same result. So there's no point of writing this long story. You get so why chat DP may give you an idea, it may not be the best, especially if it's hard to understand. But I think I learned this and it's been very helpful. It could become useful in solving other problems. So now we are confident that this is working the way we want it. So we are going to copy this and go back to year. And this is how we intend to get our year. We check first if it has a link attribute. Yeah, we get the text. If it doesn't, we just get the year directly. So um, let's save this and we can now exit. Then I believe a JSON file would have been created. We didn't get all the files we needed to get. So let's move it to the recycle bin. Save this. So let's run this one more time and see um, what it looks like. I'm hoping we don't run into any other issues again. Ah, this is not looking sweet. It's going weird. And enter. So um, it's done running. Let's look at the total number of items that were scraped. So item script says nine, item count says 999. One item is missing. We should be getting 1000 items. So um, let's move up and see if there was any error. Yep, there was one more error. So I think the fact that we scraped 999 out of 1000, that gives us a good success rate. That's like 99.999% um, because only one failed. So let's find out which one failed. Um, 
one validation error for rank value is not a valid type remember when we gave that type hint when we said that all the ranks should be integer right yeah this is where it becomes helpful so we don't have to start writing the rule we just use this um base model from pydantic and now there's a problem where one of the ranks is not an integer and we need to resolve that and i think i know where that problem is so we don't have to start debugging again that's because all the movie um the rank starts from one right then when you get to the last page when you get to 1000 when you get to 1000 you see the, the rank for the last movie is uh right here 1000 let me see do i need to what do i do to make this value show properly it's not going to show properly or you can see it's you know the rank is 1000 but then there's a comma here so we need to clean that up so um how do we clean it up it's simple we can do replace right so we can just go back to where thou movie rank so when we get a value we can now say dot replace so we want to replace the want to replace comma with nothing as it was just want to replace comma with nothing and that's an empty string so that should work fine let's save this and one more time i just want to delete this hmm. move to recycle bin yep okay so let's run this one more time this time around we should have like 100 percent success rate let's go um item script is 1000 okay. so this means that it was successful so let's just go back and see what the data looks like and now we have from the very first movie down to the very last movie let's see yeah so this is 1000 so we've been able to get all the movies that we need all of them so we can take this data to wherever you want to take it to to analyze it further or you want to save it somewhere you can save it somewhere but um i think we've achieved our objective our objective for today's this is just the first step in the next video uh, i'm going to show you how we can now follow this link for each movie for example to gather more information about the movie maybe uh information about the budget for that movie the running time for the movie and how we can extract the cast and crew for each of the movie that's we look at the filmmakers and then we go down to the cast and we also extract that we'll be doing that in the next video so if you don't want to miss it don't forget to subscribe to the channel uh, and like this video, comment and share it with your friends. So, um, see you in the next video.